Here's the story. So a few years ago, I was at a friend's house and she had this collapsible wooden bowl and I thought it was super cool. And after examining it and finding some other pictures online, I noticed that all you need is one continuous spiral cut to make this bowl. So ever since I got my bandsaw, I have been dying to try this out. This video is brought to you by Ariat. More about this awesome workwear later on in the video. This project started out on the computer by drawing out some spirals that I'm going to use as templates. I'm going to make one circle and I'm also going to make an oval, or at least I'm going to try to. <laughs> um, and if you just cut these spirals with the blade at 90 degrees to the bed, the spiral is just going to fall all the way through. So the secret here is to cut the spiral with the table tilted at an angle. But what angle? According to Google, that angle is anywhere from four to 10 degrees, and the angle is determined by the thickness of the wood that you're using. So time to experiment. First, I'll try four degrees. Now I'll try 10 degrees. And now I'll try seven degrees. I want to try just one more angle, maybe five degrees. Close off. All right, so here are the results. Four degrees. This is not a steep enough angle at all, and it's just falling right through. No good. Uh, and then I wanted to do five degrees. That was that extra one that I just did, because I just wanted to see at what angle um, it starts being good. And five degrees is not that angle because that's falling right through as well. Moving on, uh, this is seven degrees and that totally works. That is staying into place. I can't push that out any further than this. That's pretty awesome. And 10 degrees, that also works, but it is more shallow than the seven degrees. So the steeper angle, the more shallow the bowl is going to be, but you have to find the sweet spot so that it actually holds and stays in place and doesn't fall like this. So I think I'm gonna go with seven degrees. Now that I found the cutting angle that's going to work for me, I want to experiment even further. I want to make the top and the bottom a different color than the inside. So it accentuates the fact that it's a, a collapsible, expandable bowl. So there's going to be a color that's going to be inside that you'll only see when the bowl is open. So I thought of two ways that I could possibly do this. For the first one, I glued up a maple panel that will be the center core. Then I resawed some walnut at the bandsaw that will sandwich that maple core. I needed to glue up these walnut pieces to get the width that I needed, so I just quickly jointed the edges using my shooting board and a hand plane. No gaps, love it. Time to glue it all together. I thought I was being smart by setting up a whole clamping station before applying any glue. And then... Whoa. <laughs> All right, let me try to do this a little smarter. Putting pressure on my clamping station was not smart. So I prepared the pieces off to the side. I spread a ton of glue on the walnut and then placed it back on my clamping station put the maple core on top of the walnut and fix my falling clamps. Now I'll prepare the top pieces off of my whole clamping situation so the clamps don't fall again. I repeated the same process, taped up the seams, spread a ton of glue and placed it on top of the maple core. And clamped the whole sandwich up using a call to make sure that there was clamping pressure in the center of the board. The second one is more of the experiment. So off camera, I glued up two panels of white oak so I can make a nine inch circle. And now I'm thinking that I want to stain the outside of it. And then when I cut into it, the inside is going to be the raw wood, but I want it to be food safe. So I thought that maybe I can use food coloring to stain it. I have no idea if this is a good idea or not, or whether or not it will work. So, I'm going to try it out. So my thinking is here, 
is that I'm going to be able to put a food safe oil finish on top of this because this is water based. So it's not going to block the oil finish from penetrating into the wood. In theory, I think that makes sense. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to try to go for this black color. I think that might be a cool contrast. It appears as though I've made myself a giant ice cream sandwich. <laughs> and this did not end up being black. I'm not sure if this is coming across on camera, but it's a very dark green color. But it's a very cool dark green color, so I'm not disappointed in that at all. So both of the experiments are ready to cut, but both of these are actually going to be slightly different bowls. The round one is going to have a base that's the same size. That's why I prepared two blanks over here and I'm going to cut them at the same time. The oval one is going to have maybe a slightly smaller base or maybe no base at all. I'm not really quite sure yet how this one's going to work out. So I'm going to start with the round one. I used some double sided tape to attach the two blanks to each other. And then I use some painter's tape on top of the blank so that I can attach the template using some spray adhesive. This way I won't have to sand off any spray adhesive and lose any of that color after cutting. The first cut is just going to be cutting the outer circle. And for that, I have the table set to 90 degrees. The blade is 90 degrees to the table. Now in doing that, I tried to stay just outside of the line and now I'll just clean it quickly on the belt sander. And now I can separate the two halves. Now this is going to be the base and next I'll have to cut out the handle. To do this, I'm going to have to cut into the wood and I'm gonna to have to glue it back up. So I want to cut it at a point where that's going to be the least obvious. So I'm going to cut into this circle going along with the grain instead of going across the grain. And now I just need to glue that back together and that's why I went with the grain instead of going across the grain. So that's going to help hide that a lot better and it's going to seem like I never cut into it. I'll do a quick sanding on the outside here just to clean up these cuts. All right, I'm so nervous to actually do these cuts. Okay. I'm gonna set this to seven degrees like I decided before. Okay. So to get the cleanest cut possible here, I decided to use a 10 TPI blade. That means that there's 10 teeth per inch. And this blade is also 3 16 inch wide, but I think you could get away with a quarter inch blade as well. So as I was moving the piece along, it was getting harder and harder to hold because the cuts were opening up the piece and making it all squiggly and wiggly. And it was really hard to get a grip on it. So I had to keep repositioning myself in order to grip it so that I was following along on the cut line. I just needed a ton of concentration to focus on that line. And then I broke my concentration and I cut off my line. Oh, that was so frustrating. But anyway, I just kept going on making the cuts and finished until I got to the end of the spiral. Oh, did you guys see that mess up? Did you guys see that? Oh, that was so frustrating. Okay. <laughs> so I have to turn the saw off and then just back the cut out of the saw. How cool is that? So it was going so well until that mistake there. You see that? Ah, oh, so frustrating. So should I fix it? I, should I just leave it? I could just slide like a piece of wood into there and glue it up. Hmm. But besides for that mess up, the cut quality is actually really cool. And I'm loving the, how it looks like you see the color appear once you open it. I think that's really cool. 
Uh, there was definitely tear out on the bottom of it. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that just yet. Before I decide that, I guess I could just glue this together and think about that while all the glue dries. So the piece that I cut into gets glued to the outside and that's what makes it stable on the outside. And I'll just quickly sand the outside right by the glue joints on both of these parts. Now you can't even tell that I cut that because I went with the grain. Awesome. Now it's time to cut the oval bowl. So this template has two pieces of paper that I just had to tape together. And then once again, I just repeated the same process of covering the top with some painter's tape and then using some spray adhesive to put the template down. But this time I decided to address the tear out situation that I had on the first bowl by double, double side taping a sacrificial piece of plywood onto the backside. Hopefully this is going to help reduce that tear out that I had on the first bowl. With the table back at 90 degrees to the blade, I then made the first outer cut. So this cut is only going around this outer perimeter here and I didn't cut off the handles yet. This bigger outer piece is going to be the handle and um, I'm not sure how long it's going to need to be, so I'll just try to keep it as long as I possibly can. For this cut, I tried my hardest to stay right outside of the line. Now that piece that I'm cutting out is going to become the handle. And just like the round one, I gave it a quick sand before cutting up the spiral. All right. Table goes back to seven degrees. All right, close enough. I know I said that it looked like an ice cream sandwich before, but now it's even more delicious looking. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to mess it up this time. Then I just had to stay laser focused to make sure that I stayed on that cut line. So I mentioned earlier when I was cutting out the round one that I used a 10 TPI blade, that's 10 teeth per inch. And this cut is a little bit slower when you have a higher tooth count, but the end result is cleaner. And I wanted this to be a very clean cut because this is a finished cut. I'm not going to be able to sand in between there. So the oval one was actually a lot easier to cut because there was more surface area to hold on to. And also those straight lines were a really nice reprieve from having to focus on making the turns. Whew, I didn't mess it up. Kind of cool. This is sped up super fast. I want you guys to take a guess how long you think it actually took me to cut out the spiral on this oval. Leave comments down below. I'm really curious how long you guys think it took and I'll let you know if you're right. Cool. I mean, how cool is that? All right, first thing I'm gonna do is take off the plywood layer. But first, I just want you guys to notice the tear out that's on the bottom. That all would have been on the walnut. I'm really happy that I decided to use that backer piece. Super clean cut, no tear out at all. Awesome. <laughs> now I just need to glue that little cut part back up. Off camera, I sanded the insides of the handles at the spindle sander. But before figuring out how to attach them, let me just take a quick break to talk about this awesome workwear from this week's sponsor, Ariat. So you guys know that I work out of my unheated, 
uninsulated garage in the Northeast. So it is freezing in the winter time. So I've been testing out this air yacht workwear for the past couple of weeks. And so far I am really impressed. This rebar Dura canvas jacket is one of the only reasons why I'm able to be out here working right now. It is really lightweight, yet it's really warm because it's fully lined. But the best part about it is that the outside material is made out of this stretch canvas material. So this is not going to come across on camera at all. You definitely have to feel this to understand. My arms do not feel restricted at all, which is so important when you're working. So I, you really just have to feel this to understand how stretchy the fabric is. It's so awesome. I'm also really loving this Primo fleece hoodie that is not only keeping me warm, it is also keeping me safe because it is fire resistant. How cool is that? And these work boots. I've tried so many in the past and they've all just felt so heavy and uncomfortable. These are really lightweight yet super tough. They're really the most comfortable work boots that I've ever tried and I feel confident that you'll feel the same way. So if you wanna try them out, check the link in the description box down below. You could get 10% off your first order. There is also a link to all of my favorite Ariat products that you can try out or give a gift to somebody like this cable knit headband, which is keeping my ears from freezing off. So huge thank you to Ariat for keeping me warm this winter so that I could continue to make these videos for you guys. Now on to the handles. So I'm going to start with the circle first. The handle is going to attach to the bowl using a dowel. The dowel is going to go through the outer ring and only one layer of the spiral. It worked. It drilled through both. Okay, cool. Just repeat the same thing to the other side. Have this in position on the side just to get an accurate measurement for the other side. I cut the dowels to size and put them in just before they started poking out the inside of the ring. Now I can put glue on it before I hammer it into the hole that I drilled into the spiral part. Got it. For the oval one, I'm gonna work a little smarter. I'll lay the dowel across so that I could make marks on either side so I know where the center is. when I repeated the same process of starting the dowels off in the handle, putting some glue on the outside of the dowel, then banging it into place so the glue only stays on the handle part. I noticed on the oval one that the handle kept popping off because the dowel wasn't going deep enough. So I re-drilled the hole so that it was going through two of the spiral layers instead of one. Since the glue had already dried on those handles, I had to drill out the dowel to make space for a new dowel. To cut the handle to size on the round one, you just have to extend it as far as it could go. Take some sort of straight edge and line it up on the bottom. Then it makes some marks on the handle where that bottom is. Then take it over to the bandsaw, cut along those lines, being careful not to cut into your actual bowl. Then all you need to do is glue it onto the center of the base that you cut out. I just had to sand away at the food coloring stain so that the glue is going to stick. And you can also glue down that piece that you cut off at the bandsaw to kind of make it like a complete circle. I'm just gonna leave it off on this one. The handle and base on the oval one is just slightly different. I found some scrap walnut and made some quick half laps on my crosscut sled. and I cut off the handles just like I did on the circle one by extending it all the way, taking a straight edge and marking off where to cut it. Now, in order to get the correct placement for where to put this base, I used some double-sided tape and just flipped it over and then just eyeballed to make sure that everything was center, making sure that the handles were going to land on that base whenever it was in the open position. Then I could flip it over and remove it from the double-sided tape after making some marks 
and then just glue it into place. I used some brads just to hold it into place while the glue dried here, but not necessary if you have time. After the glue dried on the base, I just needed to cut the dowels flush and do all my finished sanding before applying the finish. I decided to sand this one because I have no idea why that line is in the middle there and it's just really bothering me along with this mess up that I decided not to fix. Um, I'm just going to sand it and uh, we'll see what I did the bottom. Doesn't look that great, but whatever. Super bad decision. <sighs> totally just messed it up. <sighs> okay, whatever. It was already messed up. <laughs> okay. Well, I've made that black line more visible and it looks even worse now, but I'm going to just still plow ahead and try to see what happens when I put the oil on because I'm curious to see what's going to happen to the um, food coloring. So I keep checking to see if there's food coloring coming off on this rag and maybe because I sanded it, there's not. Let me see what happens on the bottom here. So it's definitely picking up a little bit. This is a little bit black, but it's still leaving a lot of color on here. Ah, that black line, why? If I did a better job sanding, this would actually look really nice. This was such a fun experiment and I learned a ton along the way. Some fails, some successes. I learned that you can use food coloring as a stain, sort of, but I'm probably not going to use it again. Don't like how it looks, um, but I'm happy that the idea, it can just like leave my head and I don't ever have to think about it ever again. So even if you don't want to make these bowls, I think that this was just an excellent exercise to hone your skills at the bandsaw. I just learned a ton about cutting curves as I was making these. And I think that this is just a great skill building project. I also think my experiment of adding the different colors, sandwiching the maple core in there turned out amazing. There are definitely other ways you can try to figure out how to do it. Maybe other than the uh, food coloring, maybe doing like shishugi bon and like do, doing a torch on the outside or maybe doing one of those um, steel wool and vinegar finishes. So that will just stain the wood in a more natural way as well. Definitely tons of ways to experiment with something like this. So a few mistakes or things I would do differently. So when cutting into this, I didn't follow my own um, advice about going with the grain and I started the cut going across the grain. Can that be seen? So just make sure that if you use the template um, to start your cut going along with the grain, if that's where your grain is running, not to start it by that end over there, and then it would be a cleaner cut. Also on the base that I made for this one, I cut these a little bit too short and what happens is that this falls off of it. You guys saw that? And that pulls out of there. So if I would have made this cross base piece just a little bit longer, I think that wouldn't happen. Um, and I needed to uh, go into two layers. So when you're gluing it back up after making that cut into it, I only glued on like just just like the little tip over here, I think that it's better to just go ahead and right away glue two layers so that you can drill into two layers and it will be nice and strong. The same for this one. I only glued up um, just right where it was closed up, but I should have glued two layers just so that the dowels can stay in there stronger. But other than that, I think the construction of this, besides for the finishing, it looks so bad, uh, I think was, was great. So the moral of the story is go and experiment. Yes, I had a fail and this turned out looking really bad, 
but I learned a ton along the way and I had fun doing it. I had a major success with this one and I am so thrilled with how this one turned out. So it was all worth it in the end. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Ariat for sponsoring this video and I'll see you on the next one. What was I gonna say? <laughs> okay. I have a child begging for my attention. Unheated. What? <laughs> So, oh, so you could drink hot chocolate tomorrow. Oh, kind of looks cool. Okay. Where's my push stick? Seriously, where's my push stick? Oh. Why is it by the miter saw?